So how long have you been playing disc golf? Not long at all. I've been playing for a few months. I started in April of quarantine. Dude, it's April of 2021. You've been playing for a year. Whoa, I really have been playing a year. What's up YouTube fam, Robbie C here, and this week we're going to talk about a question that I believe we've all asked ourselves at one point, and you may be coming up on this benchmark yourself. How good am I supposed to be after a year of playing disc golf? This can be an extremely subjective question. How good you are depends on a variety of factors, how you started who you had starting with you, natural athleticism, and the availability you have to get out and play the game. How good you are doing a year in is a tough question to answer when we look at all of the different people who are watching this channel. So as we come upon our one year benchmark, I wanna look at four categories that we can use as a measure to see how much we've improved and how good we should be as we move forward. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't come up with these four categories. I'm getting them straight off of the PDGA website. So what are the four categories? Simple, distance, putting, shot selection, and confidence. I don't believe these four categories are perfect. I do believe they give us the right things to talk about as we are assessing individual players' games. So with one year of experience, where does the PDGA believe you should fit in terms of these categories? Well, I'll go ahead and give you a little spoiler. Confidence is not listed in the PDGA. That's a Robbie C special, but we're gonna close out on that one. To demonstrate all of this, I recently went out with three friends who started playing the game a year ago. In fact, we filmed a video called Eight Months Versus Eight Years where I played these three players in a 1v3 match. And they are all coming up on their one year anniversary of playing the game. So what did we do to celebrate? We went back to the same course and instead of playing on the AM pads, we actually played from the pro pads. We're going to look at footage from Michael, Dalton, and Justin's rounds, not only from a year ago, but the round we just played to see how they have improved in each of these categories. And my hope is that it inspires you in your journey as well. So let's jump into the first category, distance. If you've heard me say it once on the channel before, you've heard me say it tons of times, and that is I do not believe distance is the end all, be all, of playing disc golf. If you find yourself on the lower end of these numbers, I believe that's totally okay because if I'm being real with you, I live on the lower end of the distance scale as well and I still have the ability to get out there and score very well on courses. But regardless, people care about distance and that's okay. We want to take a moment to look at what the PDGA says you should be doing distance wise. The first tier of tournament play is novice. The second tier is recreational. A one year player is supposed to be playing in the recreational division. So distance wise, what does that mean for us? According to the PDGA's website, a novice player should be throwing anywhere from 175 to 250 feet. A recreational player should be throwing anywhere from 200 to 300 feet. Distance is a hard piece to measure because we always want more distance in our game. And I don't think it's a problem that we want more distance, but we need to understand that if we just commit to learning and improving our form, distance will also improve in time. I want to take a moment to highlight Michael here. When Michael was a few months into playing the game, throwing a disc further than 200, 220 feet was a big push for him. And that is totally okay because I know tons of people who are in that same boat. Fast forward to a year later, Michael steps up to the pro pads of a 385 foot hole. What does Michael find he can do? He throws a flex line with his Explorer and moves it all the way out to about 320 feet, absolutely lacing it down a tight wooded line. If you ask Michael today, hey dude, are you a bomber? I can guarantee you his answer would be no. Why? because Michael doesn't have to be crushing discs 500 feet a year into the game. He has all the distance he needs because with smart play, Michael is still able to attack courses and score well. If you've been playing for a year and you feel like you can't throw 175 feet, that's totally okay. Send me a message, reach out to me, and I'd love to help you cross those distance plateaus. It's not about lining up with Eagle McMahon on the tour. It's about lining up with your distance game and trying to find the distances that work for you. Moving on to the next category, 
putting. I was recently listening to the Nick and Matt show and Calvin Heimberg on the show talked about how putting pretty much wins everything even at the pro tour level. I believe putting is critical for your disc golf game and I really wanna take a moment to look at how you should be putting a year into your game. According to the PDGA website, if you're playing a novice, you should be making three to five out of 10 putts from 20 feet. If you're playing in the rec division a year into your game, you should be making four to six out of 10 putts from 20 feet. That's right. A year in, all the PDGA believes you should be making is one additional putt from 20 feet. What does that tell me? At 20 feet a year in, you probably still are a little outside of your comfort zone. If you find yourself a year into the game draining some 20 foot putts, that is awesome. You are probably one of the best amateurs in your area when it comes to playing in the rec division. In fact, I'd almost be willing to guarantee that statistic. I want to take a moment to talk about Justin's game. When we go back to a year ago, Justin was really undecided about his putting routine. He was trying to mimic Paige Pierce's pop with her disc and it really didn't have a lot of consistency for him as he was going through the game. Fast forward to a year later and Justin has developed a putting routine that locks him into some incredible putts. All it takes is three repetitions and bang. Justin is stone cold 15 feet and in, and I'm not afraid to tell you that if it came to a putt off in circle two between me and Justin, I'd probably put my money on Justin. The dude is incredible at sinking some long putts. I believe we get super hard on ourselves when we're not lights out even a year into the game at putting. Putting is always going to require a little work. If you ever want to put a smile on your face, think about when you tried to sink 10 foot putts back in the day and how you look at those 10 foot putts now. Our third category is shot selection. When we talk about shot selection, the PDGA tells you that as a novice player, you should be able to backhand with some accuracy and as a recreational player, you are learning different shots. These are two very loose definitions and I wanna take a moment to break down both of them. Backhand with some accuracy, I would describe as meaning you can throw the disc on a backhand and aim this half moon to get the disc to land somewhat near the target that you want it to land by. When you first started playing the game, most everything probably went super far to the left for you right-handed players and it was extremely frustrating trying to aim the disc along the fair. Way. For a lot of people, one year into the game, you're trying to learn a forehand or maybe rollers or something beyond just the typical backhand. We must also remember that different types of shots can include the subtleties of the game like hyzer flips, anhyzers, turnover shots. These are all subtle things that if you tried to learn them as a beginner, I can almost guarantee you, you would have thought, wait a minute these discs can go right? The next player I want to look at is Dalton. When we go back to a year ago, we actually put a meme in the video about Dalton's carry meter. Why? Because Dalton had already found a lot of shot shapes. He had started learning a hyzer flip and he was able to throw his backhands with some accuracy. Fast forward to a year later and Dalton is able to carve up some fairways because not only does he have a variety of shots in his bag, including turnovers, forehands, a great great flip up backhand, but Dalton also has an understanding of his discs that allow him to do certain things. In fact, on this super intimidating hole, Dalton was able to par it by himself. For reference, the last time professionals played this course, this hole actually averaged more than one stroke over par. If you're a year into the game, think about how far your backhand has come and think about how much more accuracy you have with just throwing that one shot. I love talking to people about what they throw and what they have in their bag because it's really cool to see how players understand what they can and can't do with the disc and how it builds the toolbox they have to attack the course. Which brings us to our last category, confidence. This was the Robbie C special and it's the thing I noticed the most playing with these three studs a year later. A year ago, stepping up to these wooded holes, there was a noticeable fear in the air as they tried to figure out how they were going to approach these really tight and horrendously wooded lines. I'm pretty confident that none of them actually came back and played this course for at least a month after we shot this video because it scarred them so much. Moving to a year later, these players not only 
stepped up to harder wooded lines, but they actually shot better on the front nine from the pro pads than they did playing from the amateur pads. When you have confidence as a player, you see more putts fall into the basket. You see more lines get hit and you actually see the disc go farther. It's as if our body understands there is a physical change when we become confident. The putting green was probably the place I saw it the most among these three players. A year ago when we played, you would see all of them step up to a 15 or 20 foot putt and probably miss the putt and think to themselves, wow, I'm really bad. A year later, when they stepped up to a 15 or 20 foot putt, there was only one opportunity in the entire round that all three people even had a chance to try and putt. When they stepped up to these 15 and 20 foot putts a year later, one of the first two made it guaranteed. I want to close this out by giving you the two easiest ways to gain confidence. One is practice. The more we practice, the more we gain confidence because you've done this before. The second is to just believe in yourself. If you tell yourself, hey, I'm about to play with confidence today, and you really believe it and keep telling yourself that mantra over and over again, I believe in you, so why don't you? So a year into the game, how good should you be? Honestly, it's up to you. I am so incredibly proud of Michael, Dalton, and Justin because it is so cool watching how much hard work and effort they have put into their game. And I know for a fact that if we recreated this challenge, they would absolutely destroy me unless I had mulligans. Is that something you'd be interested in seeing? Or maybe should I bring in a friend of theirs and do a little 2v3 action? Let me know in the comments below. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you, and I want to do everything I can to help you improve your game and cross over the plateaus you're facing in each of these four categories. One of the easiest ways I do this, and in fact, Michael, Dalton, and Justin are all members of it, is the Birdie Fam. The Birdie Fam is a community of disc golfers dedicated to improving in their game. We talk about all of these categories, so if you really do want to take that next step in your game, head down to the link in the description below and check out the details on how you can join the Birdie Fam. I don't know how your past year in disc golf has been, I only hope that the next year is even better. So, let's do this together, but for now, I'm going to leave you with the Birdie.